And we're live. Um, so I'm going to play the intro song quick and then we'll hop right in. Cool. Share the link via text with your family. Uh, send it to your friends from high school, um, your in laws, outlaws, cool, cool. and all that. All right. Sure. What's up, Marcin? Is it is it Marcin? Is that the right way to say it? It's Marcin, but uh, I'm used to whatever pronunciation you have. Martin, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not uh, not the best with pronouncing things, uh, but yeah, welcome. Cool, cool. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, thanks for joining. And we've got special guest host, the legend, the man, the myth, Golden, with us. Longtime producer at Rug Radio, now head of creators and uh, celebrity as well. So yeah, thanks for joining, man. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me, Bern and uh, Marcin. Pleasure to join you guys here today and discuss all of the things. Let's get it. All right. Let's get right into it. Yeah. So, Marcin, um, how did you, I guess, tell us a little bit about your like pre-crypto life and, and kind of how you got into this space? Cool, cool. Uh, so that, that's a good question. Uh, first, I spent like 13 years uh, applying technology to solve real problems, right? So uh, business process transformation and, uh, and using the technology to derive utility, the business value to the users uh, for a big uh, blue tech company, right? Uh, for the blue chip one. And uh, at some point of time, I got into the crypto uh, in 2016, I had my first, first exposure to Bitcoin uh, ju just to try, you know, just to experiment what it is about. And I have not seen that much utility from it, honestly, like to do something more, uh, more advanced from the, from the transformational perspective. Right? But I like the technology. I really like it. I had some exposure to Bitcoin. And when the def decentralized finance really, really flourished in 2020, I, I got that click, right? Like that. That is the future, right? And I need to be in that space and I want to create something. So I tried to recreate what I've been doing like at, the, uh, at my previous job, right? With, uh, in the decentralized way. So it was uh, basically the CRM, uh, kind of a decentralized sales force. But then I realized you cannot do anything if you don't have an identity, if you don't know who you are dealing, de dealing with. So I a little bit pivoted into the project that I'm running now, right? That made me like quit my corporate job and, and, and follow something, something useful to create for the people. Very interesting. So you built like, a, so you talk about like a decentralized CRM. Is that um, Empiria, which we're going to be discussing today? No, or was that, that, that was, that, that was pretty right now. Like I'm building the core more on the, on the self sovereign identity uh, with the on-chain proof of reputation that you can really understand who you are dealing it with in the, in the digital world because that, that layer is missing. You have cryptocurrencies, you have NFTs, the asset ownership, but still the identity is missing from the p picture to really understand who you are dealing with when, when, when you do anything in the, in the digital space, right? Very interesting. Uh, yeah, Golden, I, any questions? Yeah, I, I do have a question for you about your idea of identity in general because i think it's mm -hmm. uh, kind of a concept that gets skewed in our space and everybody has a different you know uh thing that comes to mind when they say identity but what what is that, what does that mean to you and and how are you going about like developing that uh so basically from philosophical perspective it's like the identity is the way that the other people perceive us right kind of and then the digital world is all about the data attestation, right? So attested data. So the, the identity at the end of the day is, is, is underlined by the data that you gather across your lifetime. And if you can get the attested, attested version of it, really like unique one that you cannot fraud, uh, then that's in the digital space becomes your identity basically. And then it could be something that it's uh, very unique to you, right? That you cannot trade. That, that's what, what makes you 
an individual with the identity. So, so it's data, right? And the data is new gold. So maybe you want to own your data and not a big tech uh, be owning those data for you and you are renting the data basically that you own from them, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like I like that concept that you have of of attaching data to it. And how about for you personally? Like, when do you feel that you developed your own digital identity or your own sense of identity in this space? Like, when did that light bulb kind of turn on for you? Mm, when I turn on for me, right? Like, uh, like internet has one missing layer, which is the identity layer, right? This, this that technology is basically missing from the web too. And and uh, the way the identity was uh, before internet, right? Which I think is fascinating. Like, let's say you have some documents confirming many things about you. Or you have the opinion of different people that you knew, right? Because you are in the personal contact with them, right? So you see them, you can punch them, you can smell them, right? You could do everything. But now the interactions are digital, right? It's, it's different. So you don't really know who you are dealing with. You, you just, uh, the way I perceive uh, the, 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 the Web3 identity, the self-sovereign identity, is the return to the times from, from before the internet. Because it's exactly the same process, just in the dig digital space. Nice. So, so we back 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 to the roots, you know, back to the roots, old proven methods, but in the digital world. Interesting. So on that note, um, let's let's dig in. Um, tell us about Imperia, like beginning to end, like uh, go through all the details. Now, kind of share my screen as we do this. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely interested to learn more. Cool. So what do we do? Like you have, you can have many identities, right? Um, and the, the identity that we focus on is the like more of the professional identity where you can uh, really like uh, monetize your, your, your insights and knowledge and, and, and uh, online social capital, right? Like a proof of reputation. So you can build the real reputation for any digital interactions uh, uh, that it's mostly focused on like uh, unlocking your potential with the data. So uh, addressing the needs of ed informal education, education and HR use, use cases. So like uh, that you can monetize your insights, your knowledge, right? So it's like a little bit of, of uh, knowledge to earn or insights to earn concept based on the identity that you create. Sounds complex, right? Or, or, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's not, not, you know, it's like a change of no paradigm, idea right? From, well, yeah, guys, like, like basically today you have your, 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 your data is all, all over the place, like in, in Google and, and, and whatever other like service, right? Um, and you, you don't really own it, you rent it. So the new paradigm is like you have a wallet basically and you own all your data, all your profiles and you can with one click, you can connect those profiles and share it based on your own terms, right? Maybe you can get compensated from it. Uh, and uh, you don't need to fill those forms, you know, it's like submit all the all the things in order to get the job or, or like prove yourself who you are and the, to others, like from professional expert, uh, perspective. So how how does what you're building like? How does it use the data, or not? How does it use it? I understand it's for identity, but we don't we yeah, yeah we don't we don't monetize the data. Is the the, the the how the user can use the data so the user builds a verified profile from the i would say it's similar to linkedin but not not really right but in linkedin you have a public cv you have a public cv and on linkedin you can like put whoever you want and there's a social proof for it what we do we will let you to document document it but confirm it by your peers confirm it by your employer uh, that it's kind of a verified, it has more value than whatever you self-declare because it has been verified by others uh, in the cryptographic way uh, with the verifiable credentials. So that's, uh, that's the, the core of the solution. And you, can, you have some skills related to what you, what you do professionally. So you can verify those skills and then you can access through those skills, like through NFTs with the gated access uh, communities, which are really professional communities, like no bots, no like shilling you need to prove really who you are to enter to that community right you, you need to prove that you have some some particular insights i think that was a, a missing thing. like the 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 fact that other parties kind of verify your data 
But how does that how does that work? Is it like they also have to participate in Imperia or they they is it something that's done externally or is that all internal? Uh, so, so basically the, we release the, the, the beta version of, of solution of, of our application, right? With the mobile wallet for those interactions with the zero knowledge proof for uh, end of this month for a future blockchain summit, JITEX 2023 in Dubai. And um, you can then test it and, and see exactly how, how it behaves. But basically the mobile wallet holds all the data and it's like on basically on your phone and it's uh, verified with the DIDs on the blockchain. We build it on Polygon ID. We are a partner. Uh, it will be announced maybe soon, right? When we release the solution, but we partner with Polygon to, um, to build that. And uh, then basically what you have, you have a uh, systems where you can log, log in, like uh, where, whoever wants to can create it, the issuer on the, on the Polygon ID. It's completely decentralized from the, that perspective. Uh, and in our use case, so we can we can participate in the broader Polygon ecosystem. Uh, that's the first thing because it's universal, right? It's uh, all all verifiable credentials on Polygon ID. It does not matter who uh, issues it. You can you can basically store on it, right? On on the wallet. Um, and uh, then we are going to uh, what we have now and we'll be releasing is also like all the issuers for those HR use cases. So confirming your professional experience, you have a artificial and intelligence generated skill test that you can confirm your skills. There's a gamification in the solution in the application where you can basically win the trophy for your skills and then you can share those skills and get access to the communities and, uh, and uh, monetization of your insights. This is, uh, all right, it just like suddenly clicked for me. So at first I was like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, but it clicked. But how far, far, how far are you familiar with self-sovereign identity, guys? I'm going to go ahead and say not at all for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, same. Can I say a few words, like comparing them to NFTs or like that would, that would maybe make it more accessible? So, <laughs> so... In the stack of the of the of the Web three, you have basically cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and you have self sovereign identity. So you have those three stacks to, to be able to do anything like more advanced, right? That you can see in Web two, let's say, right? So uh, the identity is that that last missing piece, and uh, we have cryptocurrencies, the fungible tokens. We all know what is it, and we have NFTs, non fungible tokens, and we have very fable credentials and uh, and uh, self sovereign identity. So we have both two, and uh, they have some similarities and differences, right? So um, the similarities is that it's like non fungible at the end of the day. The very fable credentials are also non fungible, right? So uh, you. It, you could make them fungible, but they are generally not because they are related to the single DIDs. They are a little bit cell bonded tokens, right? Like it's a type of NFT that when you when you receive on the wallet, you cannot get rid of it. It's like stays with you forever, right? So the VCs are a little bit similar in the sense that it re can represent any non fungible value, uh, like NFTs. But they have a few different properties. So first, they're off-chain. It's off-chain cryptography. The DID, decentralized identifier, is managing them. It's like connected with the cryptographic proof to the very feeble credentials. So all the issuance of very feeble credentials is cheaper than NFTs because they don't need to be minted. They don't need to be on the chain. But there's, and they are not non-public, right? So... Uh, the NFTs are public. Everybody can see on your, this wallet. The very credentials you need to share. So it's uh, it's uh, it's more you know for the for the type of use cases with the data, uh, not with asset ownership. They are usually better, right? And uh, for something that, which is uh, very like personalized, you can. Do, we are doing actually proof of attendance protocol on the on the very few credentials too, and. Uh, uh, the similarity is that when you get the very fable credentials, I cannot sell it to you or send it to you because it's connected to my DID. So I can share it and show it to you, but I cannot give it to you. I cannot send it to your wallet. So that's, uh, but you cannot see it unless I share it. Uh, with the NFTs, as you see, there's a little bit different. So NFTs are great for asset uh, ownership, right? Or some like, you know, 
uh, more odd than FD, which is at the end of the type of the asset. And uh, very few credentials are better for like the data that is related to the personal identity. That makes Does sense. Uh, well, right, more right. Like what is like happening here with the with this uh, new revolution that enables really like decentralized processes, and you know you can build then really really nice companies and business models based on like with NFTs, cryptocurrencies, and uh, self sovereign identity. You can build really nice stuff that it's uh, will make our you know the the word to come back with the middle class, the, ra the middle class can raise because you redistribute with Web3 the, uh, the wealth from the like big tech to the creators, to the people who are participating in it, right? Which is a beautiful idea, right? That we all want to follow. Utopia, yeah, that's the dream we're, we're always utopia, chasing. Yeah, right, but we'll, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not utopia and of course it will not happen fully, but uh, we can do something good about it. We have it, to right? chase it, we have to chase and attack it. That's that's the idea. I mean, that's kind of how I see all of decentralization in general is you know, piece by piece, step by step. Who who is like the target audience with this, right? Because I feel like mm -hmm. the the idea is really really awesome. It's really cool, but it's also it's also a little different. It's also something uh, you know something different for the normal the average like crypto participant. I think. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's a new paradigm. It's a paradigm shift, right? That you own your assets, right? With the cryptocurrencies and NFTs, and you own also your identity with the self sovereign identity. So it's like a next step. Uh, so it's probably for younger people and for know like that that the, that the, how much the data is is worth, right? That it's 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 useful to have your own data. I would say so, right? Like mm -hmm. if you get your Imagine you get your, like some very stupid example with the diploma from university. You get a diploma from the university, you keep it in the drawer, right? You can take it out. It's like your data, confirmed data, verified by the university, right? And, uh, and now in the digital world, Web2, that data is rented, like you rent it back. You need to send it somewhere and then you rent it back from them, right? It's it's crazy idea and they... Uh, they can do crazy stuff with it, like monetize, like the Google, right? Like it was fine. To, I'm not following all the fines from US, like uh, uh, from US government uh, and, and 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 your state, like like courts. But uh, the Google was ha uh, for the monetizing the data of the users only from logins last year, half a billion dollar fines on just four or five states in US. Not even the you know, not even the federal level. So. Um, uh, this is for them marketing expense. This is like, okay, we pay it and we do it further, right? So let's take our data back from them, right? That, that's the idea that we want to realize and prove. Yeah, I see like a million use cases here. Um, yeah. So just to backtrack a little. So I sign up for Imperia. I, I'm a user. Yeah. I upload my driver's license, my diploma. I choose what I upload, right? So I can dox or not dox, yeah. right? So I upload whatever information. Um, other people verify it and can verify, yeah, he worked here. Yeah, he worked here. So Correct. the more verification, the more valuable um, my profile is essentially. Um, and maybe I'm listing like my hobbies and my interests and like where I like to shop at. Are we getting into <laughs> that level? Correct. That that's all possible. That's all possible. We focus mostly on your like professional skills and the related experience that uh, uh, you can you you can do with uh, a lot of things, uh, like access the communities with that, and and of course like some educational services, uh, and you can monetize the knowledge and also document the informal education like the the world is changing we used to go to universities now mostly people like learn from youtube from from the channel from what from our conversation right they learn it like how they can prove that they learn something right from a, absolutely a yeah. system that that you know with very feeble credentials they can you could create the test from the topic right and and they could be a very feeble credentials issued for that if you if you pass it or from just from attendance if somebody gets like the proof of attendance from every of your uh, of your of your sessions right and that person gets say uh, no ten of them he can she, he can collect the the trophy for the skills that that he learned from it right you define what what the content you have here like who do you invite right yeah so, so uh, I would 
I would send. That's, that's another... really... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So that that's like something that 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 is uh, basically useful to 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 really as well engage with the community, give them something back, and so you give them some data, some attestation, basically that that the people have been here and they follow like a great content, which is useful from your perspective, right? Uh, to them, and they also think that it's useful for them if they attend like a number of sessions, right? So then they should be able to prove that engagement, right, to others. Uh, because they get new yeah. skills, right? They get new knowledge, right? That makes sense. Okay, so all right, so I'm signed up. I'm ready to go. I apply for a job. Mm -hmm. I want to get my profile um, validated more, right? So right. I'm going to send it to um, to my college where I went to school and say, yeah. "Hey, can you please Correct. click this link to verify?" Former employers, Correct. hey, just click this link saying yes. Correct. And then, okay, so Correct. so you guys don't have to chase them down. The user is chasing it down. Uh, correct, correct. Yeah, that, that's like if we, it's not scalable. If you want, yeah. if we need to chase them down, it needs to be the user, right? And yeah. then the user's interest. He owns the data. If the user owns the data, we believe, and if they see the value in it, they, they will chase to gather that data because the data is theirs, not ours. Like we don't monetize, we don't uh, monitor it. Like it's uh, it's a wallet, cast, non-custodial wallet. At the end of the day, for the data, like non-custodial wallet for the cryptocurrencies, like you own it. Yeah, we don't know what, and, and it's cri cryptographically uh, uh, encrypted, right? So we don't know what's on your wallet, right? We have no clue what is on, on your wallet. Yeah, so major, huge HR use case for sure. And like, Correct. if I'm looking for a job, I might do this proactively. And even if they don't use your services, I might say, hey, check this out. It's everything verified. So you don't have to chase it down Correct. as well. I like it. Golden. My, how, how about my friend got the, sorry, I can, can just tell you one thing. My friend just got, <laughs> got uh, hired at Chainlink, right? And they asked him to prove 10 years of previous employment, right? As, as a verification step. And uh, it's Chainlink, right? It's, it's a good company, right? Probably. We, we all agree doing some oracles, like questionable tokenomy, but like, okay, the, they saw something at least. So, uh, uh, they they want to check the ten years of his uh, previous employment history. Of course, he does not have it. <laughs> like no, who keeps it, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the there are people for sure, but uh, I I wouldn't, right? And many people also don't do it, right? So here you can really like verify it even backwards with with the company and 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 get all everything sorted. And whoever then ask it for you, you can you can show it, right? And uh, you don't need to fill endless forms. Like when you apply for the job, you need to fill your profile, like all the all the CV, whatever you done, like who are you, maybe some description, how great are you? You need to tell them, right? Uh, here, actually, we don't have the description because it's self-declared data, right? It's not verified by anybody. It's my description, but the rest you have. So you should be able to connect with your wallet and just give the consent, and then you can manage that consent that you remember that you gave consent to them for the data. And whenever you connect the wallet to that website, the the, the profile will be synchronized. So you always update the profile. So the the, the more you go to that agency. Or for a job or recruitment agency or company, whenever you log in, it will be updated, of course, with your consent, right? So there's a high quality of data in their profile as well, right? Of you as a, as a talent, right? That helps them to, uh, to find your right job or really verify if you are good for the particular position, right? That you are not missed out from the crowd. Yeah, I like that the use case of employer to me. It seems that seems very clear and direct and obvious. Like a, that's a big win for everybody. I, I do want to ask you about the data itself, kind of the the gold mm -hmm. here, in the whole the whole project. Um, you said it's like not stored directly on chain, but it's stored in the DID, and like just just my involvement in the crypto space, like transparency is everybody's you know that kind of our our big bold firework in the sky is being transparent and having everything exposed and available for everybody but storing it in your own i, I don't know if it's a server or how that goes but how how is the door the data actually stored on your guys' side like I, I know you said it's encrypted but what's what's keeping that part okay. safe so so you have uh, so the on-chain data is the decentralized identifier so each user has one let's say decentralized identifier uh on-chain right so that's 
an on-chain entry that identifies basically my wallet um, and my right to have that wallet, let's say, right? It's my, the right to that wallet, to say it like very simple terms. And all the data is encrypted with the private key for that access to this decentralized identifier. Uh, it's, it's all encrypted on your wallet, basically. Uh, and there's a cryptographic proof uh, that you that you own that verifiable credential based on your private key and that, that DID, uh, decentralized identifier. So it's a mix of on-chain cryptography with the own off-chain cryptography, which you store on your device, on your uh, on your mobile phone, on your wallet, on the on your mobile phone. I see, I see. That's like similar to how some of the cold storages work, like just encrypting it. Correct, correct. I see. It's a kind of a cold storage for uh, uh, for for your data, basically, non fungible data. Really interesting. Okay, so your your data is invisible to everybody unless they share it. And right? And you you share it, yeah. Unless okay. you, you share it, right? And you can select what you share, and uh, <laughs> you can also use this zero knowledge proof type of sharing that you can prove that that you you have some attribute without showing that attribute. And uh, the the easiest example is eighteen years old, right? For for some services to access digitally, maybe you need to be eighteen years old, right? In some jurisdictions, so. Yeah. Uh, Correct. It could be different, right? From alcohol to, uh, to other use cases, guns, porn, whatever is there in that jurisdiction, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's um, so, uh, like, how do you prove them that you're 18? So you, sell them, you send them your ID, you want to show them your ID with your name, family, first name, family name, some number, birth date, like full birth date, when we were born, some document number, your biometrics. You want to show it to that service if the, they require that? No, you don't want to do it, right? So with the zero knowledge proof, you can, you, having the verified credential for your age or for, for your kind of a kind of KYC, you can prove that you are above 18 without showing all this data. It's cryptographically proven. So uh, it ensures very high level of privacy. So you don't leave all the, your data. Like the average user in internet left the data, like, like typing the data, not that he was there and was like captured uh, and clicking the save button in more than like 2000 websites and applications, right? So it's like a lot, a lot. Yeah, I see this as being very valuable. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's such a cool use case. It's one that... Um, I, it's unique. I mean, I haven't heard of this at all. Um, so I guess my next question is, okay, so I'm a user now. I want to make some money, right? Can I click a button Correct. and say, it's okay to share my marketing info. And then you got your marketing branch of things where, okay, Rug Radio wants to buy stats on these wallets or whatever. Give us a full statistical overview. We buy that. And then you give a cut to to the person, right? Uh, yeah, so it's more like uh, the data monetization is like a, a very uh, interesting subject because it's uh, uh, trading the data for, for some services, like is of course possible, like you share your data and you get access to some services, but monetizing is directly, it's uh, not that easy. So what we what we believe in is the monetization of your insights that you have a data that you have that insight. So we facilitate like a, a number of inter interactions uh, with the user that can be verified and you can like uh, do it anonymously, right? So because I know that the person who speaks on the other side of provides me the insights has the supposed to have a knowledge of it, right? Which has been verified, but I don't need to know the name of that person. Yeah, so they, they just want to know. Very interesting profile. use case. For, yeah, just the profile, right? So the total inclusion. Like, I don't care if you are like white, black, yellow, green, whatever. It's like, I just focus on your merit. So it's not like in LinkedIn, if you search for somebody, right? And you find that person is mostly based on the, like on the content that that person creates, right? Which is, which is important, but it, it costs a lot of time. Many people don't have time to like create the content for social media. 
platforms like to prove that they know something and they have some insights most of the people are busy with raw work right yeah there's so much you could do with this um like I, I'm only one percent of like my one percent of linkedin users creates any content one percent you know the rest does not have time they, they are busy with other stuff right yeah mm. I, I use linkedin a lot prospecting in my sales job and i can mm -hmm. see like okay, I'm a salesperson and I want to go to you and I want a list of leads, right? So, you know, maybe um, maybe I say, hey, this is our pro our company profile. This is what we do. We are looking Correct. for people in this industry and you can just send them a blast. Hey, are you interested? Yes or no? Boom. And like yeah, there's yeah, so correct. much you can do. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah so of is, course uh, you can get, get the benefits to the people that you get access to them that they want to deal with you and they really show you like, you know, I'm the right person from the commerce perspective, education, right, uh, uh, or 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 work perspective, like whatever whatever you want there. So we we manage like the the three types of interactions where it can be monetized those insights. So first is like a survey to earn. So basically, somebody can create the survey with the smart contract related to it. When you click save, you are connected with your crypto wallet. You, you basically it's it's safe and when you submit the it's access through the skills that are verified right so i want let's say i want to check some survey on my on my application with the recruiters worldwide i want to ask ten thousand recruits recruiters right like what do they think about the, the flow of the solution did i run I, I think it might be Marcin a little bit. I think he, he rugged a little. little. Can you hear me? Because uh, You're back. Yeah, you're broke. Right. There yeah. you go. <laughs> no worries. Maybe. Sort of back. In the meantime, check out this Rex Tumblr. It's full of whiskey, uh, bourbon right now. It's really good. But isn't that clean? Pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Sister-in-law. I, I would like... I would like to see your uh, your um, empire, Imperia to make sure that you're of age, of proper age, to consume a beverage like that, sir. Um, I do look like I'm 18, don't I? <laughs> no, but you know you do look young. <laughs> I'm nearly 40. We need to. I need to make some rug radio versions of these. We need to get some more rug merch out there. Need a lot, yeah. Yeah, oh, we no. lost it completely. We lost it's, it's pretty interesting, though. Like, I mean, the concept is is pretty cool. The, I I wonder how to look like out there in the wild, like you know, outside of specific individuals that want to do this. Because I feel like something like this needs numbers to kind of take off the ground and and you know start spreading and be utilized, especially with like that dual verification of other parties, like giving information about stuff. So, are you back it's with? Sorry, I'm back. Something, uh, something like got disconnected. Sorry, I had to restart. Sorry, right, man. It's not easy being on a tropical island. I mean, I, I really yeah. feel for you. So, <laughs> yeah, <It's a> <laughs> you know, yeah, perfect. You're... Like 28 degrees Celsius, right? So it's uh, it's not like in Dubai. I live in Dubai, right? And it's in Dubai. It's like just so humid, so hot. Now it's not possible to survive. So the weekends I try to spend in the more friendly environment. Yeah, that's way too hot. Way too hot. Yeah, that's why I can't, I can't imagine trying to get away from Dubai, but <laughs> that's cool. Um, I, I did want to ask you kind of about your user base because I feel like uh, when you were gone, mm -hmm. I was just mentioning that I think something like this, an application like this, uh, does require like a certain number of people to really put it on a like a tipping point and make make the all the data and interactions make sense especially with other parties verifying and and businesses using it so Correct. what what type of user base does it have now and like how long have you guys been up and running uh so we have now the private uh, beta right which 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 is being tested by by around 100 users uh and uh, in one month for the JITEX 2023 in Dubai, we'll release the, the public version for people to test. Uh, so we have uh, 
We have a lot of interest from the communities in Southeastern Asia because it's the people, those are the people that want to prove themselves who they are. They want to provide digital services to, to Western countries, right? They want to invest in their knowledge and, uh, and learn to, to basically earn money, right? Uh, so, so that's the, the, the major interest we have, right? Uh, so, and, and we are building based on that organically, right, so far. So we, we wanted to have 100 people in private version of the, of the application. We have it and, and that, that, that continues. So I hope the, the interest will be, will be, will be coming. We'll be also interested, like, like we're working with communities, right? Uh, and then uh, mostly NFT communities uh, and, and also communities of crypto communities, right? And we showed out this, this application, the concept, uh, get kind of good feedback, right? It's a little bit complex to explain, right? It's uh, we struggle, uh, so we try to also make it. it, it it's the simpler messaging, uh, but generally the young population, ninety to 12, thirty years, Southeastern Asia, super interested in uh, and participating in this kind of uh, uh, Web three uh, application being rolled out. Yeah, that makes sense for the for the 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 places in the world that are already accepting to crypto and utilizing it in their country Correct. and doing that type of stuff. I think an application like this makes a lot of sense uh, moving forward because it's difficult, right? It's difficult to exist and do things in the traditional way and then introduce crypto and, and the way that we do things that way. So that it's Correct. A, an easy, so maybe not easy, but it is a solution for a lot of those problems, I think. Um, what, but, when it you said you're going to roll out possibly in this uh, event in Dubai, what what does that look like? Like how do you how are you guys approaching onboarding besides like reaching out to small communities? Like how how are you guys going attacking that? Yes, yeah, so uh, I mean we have uh, we have a launch on the stage of of the event, but uh, for me the most important is working with with communi communities because the early adopters, right? They are kind of an innovators that are active in the and in, in the crypto space, right? They they are the ones that in crypto winter they still still uh, look at the, they believe in the technology, right? That the technology is changing something, right? So they want to participate in it and explore it, right? Uh, so those are the communities that we are looking currently, and uh, then we need to build the, the kind of ambassador network, invest more in the marketing. Right now we have a few angel investors, and we mostly focus on b building the solution and uh, we believe that uh, the moment there's a launch and we move more towards the commercial version uh, which enables users to basically monetize those insights uh, not just gather the data and, and, and create the profiles like manipulate the data and all that but the moment they start monetizing it we will also start investing in marketing right to get a broader adoption of the, of the users yeah, I think that's, that's super important. I, I feel like if, yeah. if there was a way to visually see like what you're talking about, like the actual application mm -hmm. from start to be from end to end, right? From the user to the people verifying to the way the tech works, I think that would really assist with that that part of it because it's it is difficult to correct from words and and trying to understand it, like you know, just the concept of identity and, and using the blockchain that way. So that'll be. I think that'll really help once once you guys do start pushing it in that direction. But communities is where it's at, right? I mean, that's that's why we're all here to begin with. We so, all came from right. communities and building that way. Correct, okay, correct. so yeah, the community is all 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 about like the the mo one of the most beautiful things in Web three. It's like in crypto community. So it's it's, it's key. great to be here with you, right? Yeah, you as well. Um, so I'm thinking through like your your whole uh, branding hurdle or like hurdle of explaining to the, this to people so it's so simple that they can get it really quick like they they just know and I think like something simple like prove your identity verify their identity like because right now you're saying discover imperious self sovereign identity and locking boundless possibilities. That makes sense to somebody who knows what you're talking about. But like, if I were to come across your, right. like, I, I looked at your website first and I was like, well, oh, I'm just going to ask them because like, it's, <laughs> it's confusing. But I think if you shorten it and make it like simple, so someone like me can understand it, like prove your identity, 
verify their identity. Um, it kind of it makes it a little more uh, quick and easy to understand for anybody. And I think for mass adoption, you've got to have some form of that where it's really, 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 really simple. And I think that could help. Yeah, I, I agree, Burn. That's it. That's yeah, kind of where I was going to with the, Thank you. like a very simple visual display of that too. Like, you know, like this is, this is the identity and this is what we're doing with the data and how it can benefit somebody. And maybe even like a, a real world use case of somebody in, in a part of the world where that makes sense to use, like how they use it and telling that story about them. I think that that would really help um, tell the, tell, you know, what you guys are trying to do here. Yeah, like short videos, yeah. like just short clips, like, short clips, I mean, there's, there's one, a lot you one can minute do. clip, how to use it. Yeah, what you can do with it, right? Yeah, yeah, just like super yeah. simple stuff. Here's you what it did. On, uh, you can try it out on Burn Dog Lurg. He likes, you know, he's he's a good uh, okay. guinea, guinea pig. pig. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we do so. We send you afterwards like a few movies. Like the, the moment the application works, you want to record the few movies, right? To really show what is it, right? Because it's it's an abstract subject and not that intuitive, right? We are like, it is, right? but it's so valuable. I think this is like extremely yeah. valuable, um, and it it could be absolutely massive. I mean, uh, especially from an HR perspective. I, I mean, there's so many use cases like. You could you could just spend a whole day like coming up with different use cases and ways that Correct. you can sell this. It's it's nuts. I mean, this is one of the coolest uses of Web three technology or blockchain technology that I've seen so far. Definitely. Yeah, and I think I think you know there's like a huge movement right now of the the young people and the Zoomers talking about their data and how important it is and correct the the concept of people's data being sold or utilized without their permission, you know, it's causing a lot of talk at the very least. People are talking about that a lot with, with the big apps like TikTok or, you know, these, these apps that don't really Correct. ask you permission for things. So getting that audience, uh, getting them uh, to appreciate what you're doing and get involved. I think that's, that'll start a wildfire because you need that one little TikTok clip of somebody showing how, how yeah. they're, their identity was was saved from the big scary um <laughs> you know the big scary corporation and and that's that's a winner that's gold around 20 percent of people 20 21 like gen z they understand that uh, it's important to own the data so still like you know a little bit to to go uh, for the mass adoption even of understanding the problem with the with the data that the data is monetized and you don't know it right so it's, it's a journey, but generally the younger people are getting it and, and we need to help them to uh, enable them to, to own their data, basically. And there's like, like you mentioned, Ben, there's like thousands of use cases you can come up with, right? So we do just a, a tiny bit of it, the tip of the iceberg with that HR profile, proof of reputation, right? And using that data, but it's from healthcare to to travel right you can you can have whatever use case you want and you can be just the owner of your data and there will be a lot of benefits that you can find there definitely agree um cool uh i'm trying to think if i have any other questions um i mean i get it it makes sense um i really i really like it um, kind of wish I was one of those angel investors, but you know, I, I'm a poor boy, so I'm not angel investing in anything, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah. I, you know, what would be really cool is if you could find a way to wedge yourself between people in like Google and Facebook and like become a barrier, like you can really get all those huge companies by the balls and like the, the potential there would be absolutely massive. I don't know if that's possible. I'm not a tech guy at all, but. That would be yeah. pretty cool. I think you're onto something, Burn. Like associating a pro product like this with security and safety, right? From from the big scary companies that that's a, a narrative that a lot of people would get behind very easily. Yeah, and you get people could say, "Hey, if 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 Google wants my information, they can pay me, right?" And I mean, like basically, you could hold info hostage, and then or they could say, "I don't want to share any info," you know, give people the option at least. Correct. That, That'd be insane. So, 
I this is a uh, not your average product, right? It's not your average application. But do you guys see competition in the space right now? Are there anybody anybody else like doing something similar to what you're doing that you've seen out there? Like uh, an identity space, this type of the things that we are talking, right? Uh, HR use case, I have not seen, but. Uh, like today, we are probably one of the of the most advanced solutions on applications on the running on Polygon ID, which is the most advanced identity blockchain, with, because they have a competence and zero knowledge proof. Uh, it's now the forefront of 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 like the enablement from the technological perspective, right? Uh, so. Uh, uh, looking looking from that perspective. Uh, we are uh, we we are leading from technology perspective adoption, but there's in that space there is of course more pro products like building like the identity wallet, which is more generic, let's say, not focus on on some particular like use case. So there are some identity wallets also on Polygon, uh, and and there are some other issues and uh, you know some other issues that certification from university. So there are different like fragmented projects. Uh, and that space and most of the SSI and that that space is all about KYC, right? So the KYC is uh, becoming popular because of the change of the regulations in European Union, uh, where you will need to have uh, a KYC for your crypto transactions, right? So the basically the regulator is uh, is enforcing uh, on the UN citizens and the businesses that are deal with, dealing with them. Uh, regulation which requires the, the crypto wallet to have KYC, so KYC can be only done in the private way on the on the on the identity wallet, right? It cannot be done on chain as the SBT because then basically your wallet is public and mapped to your personal data, and maybe you don't want it, right? <laughs> that that your wallet is mapped and everybody can see like what's your name connected to the wallet that you have. Yeah, that's huge, especially with the new. Um the new legislate or I don't know if I call it legislation, the new rules from the IRS here at the U S where uh, the exchanges are going to have to provide and MetaMask and wallets are going to have to provide. And MetaMask, yeah. Yeah. They, they're going to have to provide us this form with a breakdown, which I love because I hate doing taxes. I just want like a summary. Um, so a lot of people hate that, but I like it. Um, but if I could KYC through this, instead of having to, Oh, here's my license and do that. Like, 30 times um, it makes it easier and it's it's more secure as well i think because uh, the data is being held centrally as well so um i'm yeah, interested and the exchange this. and in the exchange you can just log in with the zero knowledge proof so you can show that your identity your kyc is confirmed but you don't need to show your data you don't need to show right. your name basically yeah that's so that's nice perfect. right yeah, nice. I like they it. They don't need to know your name, right? Like that you trade the, like 1 billion, 1 billion uh, BTCs, right? That you are now withdrawing, right? To your wallet, right? They don't, they should not know it, like who is behind it. Yeah, I don't want them laughing when they, um, when they read how I did this year <laughs> yeah. um, and, and saying, ah, that, that was burned. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I think the environment is really shifting in the way of this technology as well to make it more advantageous for you. So, um, yeah, I love it, man. Golden, anything else from you? I, I'm pretty solid with it, man. I feel I, I came on the, the show prepared to give you a good roast and really just tear your project apart. And now I'm a fan. So <laughs> I guess I guess. Thank that's you. A, Thank you, guys. <laughs> That happens a maybe lot. you know we we can, we can we can connect post the post the launch of uh, then I can show you how it works right uh, if you if you are interested to further explore yeah yeah I, I definitely would be and um and we can connect further to yeah we, yeah it'd be good to connect after the show for sure um, and then maybe you know a few months down the line to uh, look at um, you know how things are going how's adoption going and things like that um, yeah. Hefter is telling me what score to give. So we do have to rate your project. We have to rate Imperia as well. Oh, you have, I, I have to be rated. So it's like, I, and now I, I received the external validation, right? Like uh, exactly. a verification yeah. kind of, right? <laughs> and I cannot get it on the wallet yet. I cannot get it on the wallet. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> this will be public. It's not encrypted. So this yeah, is yeah, so be... it's social proof. Social proof. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is going to be Golden's first ever rating. Um, so this is a special moment. I want everyone who's listening or watching to pay very close attention. Uh, but Golden, go ahead. Ah, uh, right. And, and the scale is 10. Is that, is that how, or is the scale arbitrary? How does it it's say? 10 and it, it's up to 10, one through 10, 10 being the best. And you can go to like as many decimal points as you want. So you mm. could do like, uh, you know, like pi you could do you could use pi as your rating we're not going to here because this is way too good but um, yeah, yeah it's a, little better than pi, I think. a little better than pi yeah i, I would give it like a 7.020069 i think i i like where it is <laughs> the my my trepidations or hesitations just come from it's being in an infancy stage and not having gone through a lot of you know the the back and forth and turmoils that you will surely encounter being involved in data and and all those things. So with time, uh, my score would go up as I see more participants involved and kind of like how it works on a big, massive scale. Um, but the concept is amazing. I, I really like the idea of, you know, having encrypted data and having a little bit of control of your data in this time, I think is just, you know, invaluable. Yeah, good thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. That, that that's a very good score right and we uh want to show you like that uh this the application right and the, and the new feature that you will see it it, it works uh, and it uh, it's a little bit complex right uh, to understand the concept but once you have the the application is far simpler basically yeah it's so i think i'm gonna give it a Seven point nine six nine six nine four two zero six nine four two zero six nine, um, and I think the potential here is massive. Like if you can execute on this and and things go well, and you can find a way to really get the masses to adopt this, it's going to be absolutely massive. Um, I, do I think that that'll be easy? No, uh, but you seem really smart. I mean, you've gotten this far. Uh, you came up with the idea. You built it. Two years. Yourself. Two years. That's you impressive. Know, so you know. I mean, so I, I think you've got t t now a team of twelve people, right? Twelve people now. You know, two years of building. It's it's you you can build something, right? You can prove some some theory to work, and it's what what we are going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And and you can build the best mousetrap, but unless people find out about it, right? So, and, and I yeah. think so. I think you've got the mousetrap. I think you just have to uh, just mass adoption. And if you can, if you can nail that and get this down, which I see the use case right away. So if you can simplify it, make it easy for everyone to understand to the point where they're like, yeah, I'll hop in. And I like your strategy of going to Southeast Asia first. Um, you know, they're, they're, our team just got back from there and they said they're miles ahead of us in terms of blockchain and Correct. understanding the value. Correct. Like we are way behind here. Um, so I, I love that strategy. And um yeah, man, I, I think that uh, this is going to go very, very well for you um, as long as you can continue to execute. So I love it, man. Yeah, we, we, conti we continue, right? Uh, we have a blockchain architect from Injective Protocol. We have a really good team, you know, a lot of experience. And uh, this uh, this is a new application, right? There's a level of, uh, of rework that needs to happen, right? Because you experiment with, with, with something new uh, where there's no, like, you cannot find anybody who done it before, right? From the technological perspective, so the people need to learn and they apply some some skills that they acquired before. Uh, but uh, we are we are moving. We are moving at the the, the fast piece forward uh, with with twelve people, and uh, you will see the the public version in one month time. I'm on the biggest, we released it all on, of the biggest even big, biggest tech show and and. Middle East, one of the biggest worldwide, hundred, hundred thousand people coming to that show. So uh, it's uh, it's like the first uh, first step. We've been there last year, like the launching the project officially from the stealth mode, and and this year we are going for for the launch of the product and the better. Oh, so one, one more question. So let's say I'm I'm my dad. <laughs> let's pretend I'm my dad, who hates blockchain, hates. He thinks crypto yeah. is a scam, um, but I stumble across this and I sign up. Do, does he have to create a wallet and everything, or does creating an account automatically create his wallet and the blockchain is just working okay. in the background? 
Uh, so he needs to have a, a wallet, which is a mobile app, is a soft wallet, and uh, he should back up his uh, his keys at, at least, you know, to the iCloud, which maybe he will then share them with uh, with Apple or like Google Cloud. But uh, uh, he can do it, right? For ease of adoption, the things that I would not prefer to use, but we have those things, and for the web part of the of the of the application he can log with us with the email and then they create the the wallet on the mobile phone later okay gotcha so i would suggest looking into privy one of our um one of our guests a couple weeks ago said that they worked with them so when you create your login it automatically creates your wallet in the background and the wallet's there but you really just need your login to access it so um I don't know if, yeah, if we have something looking. similar. We have like the DID can be created with the with the email, right? Uh, but uh, you know, you need to store the data somewhere, right? So if uh, like in your if you have a certificates like paper ones, you will have a drawer in your or the safe. I don't know whatever is that paper worth to you that data, right? So here we need to have the. And the wallet uh, on the mobile phone, right? To really hold the data, and you can of course backup it for the for your security in the traditional way, like iCloud. Uh, but uh, you need to have the application on the on the mobile phone. But you can start with the easier journey with from the from the web perspective to try if you like it, and then you can export basically the data into the into the mobile wallet. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um... Yeah, my, my point of view is always the easier you make it for someone to join, uh, the better it'll be. Um, and it sounds like you've already the, taken steps to do that. But Yeah, the yeah. less clicks, the better. The less clicks, the better, right? Like exactly. nobody wants to click through in the forums, right? And and have difficulties with access. But I still think it's mostly for for younger generation. Also, if you have very if you have if you have more professional experience, you are uh, kind of you have a, your network, right? Usually, right. So it's seventy uh, percent of the of the of the jobs, right? Are, are, are the people get contracted from through the network, right? So uh, uh, that's basically the majority, and this is mostly for young people who want to prove you know, themselves on the on the digital marketplace of the, of the talents, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thanks for your time. It was great meeting you, Marcin. Thank you very much. Think, uh, Thank you. You're going to crush it, man. Golden, thanks for, yeah, for co-hosting. It's good to have a celebrity on the show. <laughs> so thank you very much, guys, and have a, have a great day still. Like Now I'm going to sleep, and tomorrow free diving at 6 a.m. So uh, Ooh, wow. uh, that, 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 that's the weekend uh, approaching. You, know. uh, you should join nice. me in Dubai. Let me know if you're ever coming to Dubai. Then let, let us know, and let, let's catch that's up in person. Day. One of these days. I would love it. Someday we'll make it out there. We just got we just got to squeeze our bosses to you know. Hey, we got to do a Dubai team meeting or something. Cool. We'll let you know. <laughs> cool. Cheers. Have a great right, day. Thanks, Cheers. Man. Bye -bye. Cheers. So this is the part, and you've seen the show where we just play this, and we're kind of awkward. It's good bourbon. It's bourbon and ice. I've had like 17 cups of coffee today. It's, it's rough. I'm ba I basically have a constant drip of coffee. I'm just slamming it. End stream. <laughs>